Whenever, whenever you would like to intro it is up to you. What did I say last time? I don't remember. This is all <laughs> staying in. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Just I don't know. <laughs> Welcome to the Paraz Nutrition Podcast. Yep, that's it. There it is. Boom. Hey, how you doing today? Good. How about you? I'm great. <laughs> I'm doing fantastic. Figured out a bunch of nonsense with my computer, and now we're ready to go two hours later. Well, two hours later is better than never. Yeah, better late than never. <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> we're back. We're back at it again. We're looking at plant-based protein today. Yes. One of Felicia's favorite topics of all time. Yes. Felicia Peraza of Peraza Nutrition, perazanutrition.com. Registered dietitian, overall cool person. <laughs> I like to think so. It's going on your business card next <laughs> time. All right. So um, what would you want to get into specifically? Um, I was thinking maybe we could start with just maybe the benefits of plant protein, like why people might be interested in, in adding something like that to their diet. Yeah. Okay. So, um, and there's a lot of misconceptions about plant protein as it is anyway. So I feel like this is a good timely kind of topic. Um, but I mean, some people if they're looking to transition, maybe vegetarian, vegan, that sort of thing, or just be more plant forward. Or why would they want to do that? Well, a couple of reasons could be, you know, environmental concerns, animal rights, um, and then the health benefits, which is kind of where a lot uh, of my yeah. expertise falls. So I think that's kind of the main, that's what everyone wants to know about. If, if anyone wants to know anything about it, I think, I think everybody kind of gets an idea for the, the non-health stuff. Mm -hmm. I think most people kind of get that it's just not enough to care about. I think the yeah. health stuff is the most, um, you know, influential. Yeah, definitely. Um, so a couple of things, I mean, in switching from like animal protein to, to plant protein, you're going to definitely get a lot more fiber, um, which is good for heart health, GI. <laughs> Bathroom times. Bathroom times. Keeping Heck you consistent yeah. and regular, um, which nobody likes to talk about. Yeah, because it's gross. <laughs> There's a reason. It's stinky. <laughs> well, that, but it's pretty good. Stinky. You want your bowels to move. You don't want to end up with things like diverticulitis, so. And move they do. When you <laughs> live with someone who gets a lot of fiber in their diet, you know. Oh, yes. So I perks. know. <laughs> That's when you know someone's a keeper. <laughs> That's how you know. Okay. Yeah, we'll go with that. That's fine. So so plant proteins, um, we're, we're talking about, um, like, when you say a plant protein, like what does that mean? Because I, you know, yeah. I guess the <laughs> thing that that first comes to mind is like soy mm -hmm. or fake meat. Yeah, the soy can definitely be one. So like soybeans, edamame, um, or things like tofu, which is my personal favorite. Uh, tempeh, which is another one. Uh, these are all considered plant proteins, but yeah, I'm tempeh. Protein. I don't know. I mean, I'm you know, I'm I'm on the tofu train. I just yeah, I'm not into tempeh. It's not. Well, I don't know. I haven't had it much. I don't really typically buy it. What do you do it. with it if you get tempeh? What so do if you, you get, do with it? If you get tempeh, it comes in like a like a rectangle shape generally. Um, and it's a little bit more textured. So some people like it because it's got like a little bit more like a beanie texture. And it's a little bit more firm. So some people like that better. But you can cut it in half. And then it's kind of like a shape of a square patty to say the least. Um, and so you can like put it on a burger like a pad, like make it into a burger. And you can so. like make a little tempeh burger with it. Put yeah. Put it in a bun. Pretend or, it's meat. Exactly. Yeah, basically. <laughs> or you can like slice it up, put it on a salad. Stir fries, it works really well for like stir fry and it holds up. Um, I just saw someone was doing like chili with it too, which you can also do. So, but it's a little bit more texture. So some people find that it's a little bit more comparable. So, I mean, you, so you just said somebody put it in chili. You can use it like a meat. Like, you can do anything you would do with, with I guess, ground beef. Yeah, definitely. Right? So, it's like you crumble it up and use it like ground beef or keep it whole and kind of use it as like a patty to put on like a burger or in like a wrap or something like Tempe that. Tempeh steak. Tempeh steak. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe you should use a different word. Yeah. Tempeh <laughs> slab. Tempeh slab. <laughs> That's better. So, um, higher fiber. Yeah. Right. Um it's like kind of a lot to get into the whole environmental animal cruelty thing. It's not really your area. No. But, but in terms of the no. health benefits, 
the fiber is like the main thing? Fiber is one of the main things, but one of the bigger things that I usually talk about with like comparing, let's say, you know, red meat to to like beans or tofu is the heart health aspect. So you get the fiber piece, which is important for heart health um, and bringing down your cholesterol. But then there's no cholesterol in your plant foods. So that would be the other thing, too, is the low cholesterol aspect of it and lower saturated fat generally, too. So. So you're you're saying that eating um, meat usually mm-hmm. is associated with uh, cholesterol and fat intake. Like you kind of can't. Well, like I don't know. Well, like chicken or yeah, beef? your your red meats are going to be a lot higher in things like cholesterol and and saturated fats. It's all going to depend on like the cut and the type of meat too. Um, but you're definitely not going to get the fiber aspect with those kinds of proteins either. Um, Sodium is one of those that's kind of like depends on how you're purchasing stuff. So, yeah, because I guess all that a lot of that stuff is is uh what is it is it just inherently high sodium? That's kind of a concern, like a preservative. Yeah, and that's yeah, it depends on the types. Like if you're going for like something like bacon, that's gonna be way higher in sodium. But that same kind of line of thinking, if you're doing like a tempeh bacon where you're gonna get pre-made, it may be high in sodium too. So yeah, I feel like all that stuff is um gonna be no matter what it is, it's. It's higher in sodium. Yeah. It doesn't really matter if it's like a meat or a not, not a meat. Yeah. That's right. You know, like that's why I like going with more of like the, like tofu that's not already seasoned and whatnot. Cause then you can control exactly what goes in it and you're still getting the benefit of it being like, you know, zero cholesterol has some fiber, you know, it's going to have obviously protein in it. Um, but then at the same token, it's not going to have extras like your, you know, added oils or sodium. You know, one, one thing with with the need to to even justify a plant based diet with protein is just kind of how overblown protein is in general. Yeah, I mean it's God. That's that's the I I I always thought it was funny that it was a stereotype, and then when I would talk about vegetarianism and doing it, that's what I would get asked. Yeah, and like it's it's a meme online. Like it's herder. Where do you you know where do you get your protein? But that's real. Mm-hmm. That's what people ask. That's what people ask me. Yeah. And it's just silly because, well, it's just, it's not a question that you need to ask. No. It's like regular adults don't, don't need that much protein. I mean, it's really easy to get. I mean, protein is, protein's important, but it's also, there's other macronutrients and micronutrients you that are important. You can't avoid protein. No, it's in, it's the, in everything. It's in everything, but it's also really easy to get enough protein and it's funny. Well, because, that's what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's so easy to enough protein, and what the minimum is is also a lot lower than what people think it is. You know. Yeah. So that's the other thing too. So the minimum, what does that mean? Like, what is that? When you say the minimum, it's just like to be a healthy person with like a normal level of activity. Yeah. So well, actually, like your sedentary adults, um, generally it's like. 0.8 grams per kilogram of body weight or a pound one Can you speak american sorry <laughs> we're like the... if you're just thinking like an average you know like i don't know 130 pound female let's just say who's mm-hmm. pretty sedentary like the rda is around like 40 or 50 grams of protein pretty uh, yeah that's not that's not that much no and if you think about like you know three ounces of tofu it's like 10 grams of protein right there yeah well i mean tofu i don't know like uh my my quarantine diet's been pretty high in starch, and that's got a surprising amount like oats and you know even even rice or potatoes and there's protein in everything. Yeah, it's weird if you look at certain vegetables, uh, I th- and this surprised me too with broccoli. There's just not a lot of calories in broccoli, but a surprisingly high percentage of the calories from broccoli are in protein. Yeah, it's weird, but because you wouldn't think protein broccoli you yeah know? yeah but definitely. it's in there yeah and even like those kinds of vegetables people don't associate them with having any protein at all granted they're not high sources of protein like a tofu tempeh or or beans like chickpeas and black beans are gonna have a lot higher you know content in terms of protein yeah but they still have it and that's where it can add up you know throughout the day that See, people that's, don't realize so, so okay like I, I'm just you know I'm, I'm playing devil's advocate. I'm imagining. Sure, you can get a significant amount of protein from foods 
like beans and starch and other stuff, but there's so many carbs in those foods, and that's too high carb, and I'm going to get fat. I don't want to get fat. Bikini season's coming up. I want to be slim and slender. I want to have a beach bod, six-pack abs. I don't want to be uh, like some beanie dad bod because I get <laughs> too many farty calories from, <laughs> from all the, the high-carb beans. What am I to do? <laughs> so carbs are, one, carbs are not the enemy. I mean, your brain primarily functions off of glucose, um, the first thing aside. But the type of carbs matter. So things like beans, and like all the plant proteins we're talking about are going to be higher in carbohydrates. Absolutely. Right. But they're also going to be packaged with other micronutrients and fiber. Yeah. And they're, the amount of calories is so low compared to other sources you know, if you're thinking about 100 calories worth of chips versus like 100 calories worth of, I don't know. Well, I don't use broccoli because that's a that's a lot of broccoli. A, that's <laughs> an insane amount of broccoli. <laughs> but it, that's well, that's know. actually worth. There's that as the picture. Maybe I'll throw it up uh, of like how much space in your stomach uh, x amount of calories of oil takes up, and then x amount of calories of like some kind of meat and x amount of calories of of uh, like lettuce or something. And the mm-hmm. lettuce is insane. Like in terms of volume. Is huge. Yeah. So your your plants are just going to be in terms of volume per calorie, like like a head of lettuce is, is in, in terms of just raw size is like you know, uh, pretty big yeah. and it's like bigger than a softball, mm-hmm. but it's got like like eleven calories in it or something ridiculous. Yeah, it's really low. It's not a lot. It's really high water content. That's the other thing too is they're going to have a higher water content and fiber. They're going to fill you up. So that's where the variety comes in. That's going to be important too, because you know some people feel like they they get really full quickly sometimes with their you know the vegetable intake, you know eating more plant based style, but then they feel hungry later. So that's where it's good to kind of have like a good blend of you know not just iceberg lettuce, <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure, <laughs> so that kind of thing, yeah. just to mix it up to make sure that you're getting you know dense foods too. So right, add calories there. Okay, so. Um, in terms of, of um, plant-based proteins, you know, we're the, the first thought is always the fake meat mm-hmm. or, the, you know, I like the, the feet, fake meat, <laughs> right? Wow. That's, yeah. That's so, okay. uh, I know, that was it's terrible. <laughs> it's, it's not funny. I know. You say I, I make know bad it's not, I know it's not funny. <laughs> All right. Let's, so, um, whatever. Uh, and then, you know, what people, so that's what, what, that's what everyone thinks about right away. Yeah. Fake meat, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, and then people kind of know what tofu is. Yeah. And and less people know what tempeh is, but it's kind of, it's a tofu-esque product. Yeah. But I still think it's just a, it's a sleeper that like literally everything has protein. And like, you know, the, the, the stuff that you would never guess, like fruit has some protein in it. Yeah. Not a lot, not but it a does lot, have, but yeah. It's just, you, you can't, you can't not eat. I challenge you to not eat protein one day. Try not eating it. You can't. Mm-hmm. Everything has it. Yeah. And that's, I don't, I don't think that's front and center enough. And then there's the whole notion of, uh, I know it's antiquated. It's not real. Like some people still full sale, like get into the whole, um, complete protein. Oh thing. yeah. And we'll just, can you just talk about it? So, I mean, well, just to kind of like a, a complete protein would, the term actually means that it has all the essential amino acids that your body needs in ample amounts. What would be termed an incomplete protein is that it's low in one of those essential amino acids. It's not to say that it's missing. So low, but, but not there's low. not zero. Exactly. So but is it true that then um, most plant proteins, if not all, have a full amino acid profile? Yeah, generally they do. And there's some that are actually considered complete still. like Even um, on their own with the... So, but yeah. like the, the word, I feel like the word complete is misleading. It is, but that's the term that you're going to see. And it's in, it's, that's like the definition if you're talking about complete protein. So it's going to come up. But the whole notion of that you have to pair incomplete and complete protein, incomplete proteins together to get a complementary protein, which would have all of your essential amino acids, is a myth. And that's what people still believe to this day, some people anyway, that you have to pair your proteins, otherwise they're not a complete protein. And then I don't know what usually they think after that, but that's that's kind of the line of thinking, which is just completely false because your body does that pairing for you. So as long as you're getting enough protein and a variety of proteins throughout the day, they don't have to go together. Yeah, so it, what, what it always seems like to me is that the main thing is you just, you'll you'll get it, You'll get it straight up most of the time regardless. Yeah. Anyway. 
But if you're if you're eating a fair amount of variety mm-hmm. with your diet, a fair amount, you don't have to eat fifty foods a day. No, <laughs> yeah. But like you know, even, and is it is it even dependent upon the day? Like it's is 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 the whole fat soluble, water soluble thing? Is that does that apply to protein at all? No. So your fat soluble would apply to um, your vitamins and minerals. So, so your, if you eat protein, yeah, and I mean. I mean, in terms of like how your body will transport proteins, there's like, you know, the watery environment. That's, I would probably so say that's. So I little. guess what I'm getting at is like, do you even need to think of it day to day? Because say one day I eat a bunch of rice. Mm. Okay. The next day I eat peas. Now, say Monday I eat the rice, Tuesday I eat the peas. And Tuesday, the rice is not like, it's still in me. Yeah. Somewhere. Uh, and my body got whatever was bioavailable from that rice, some, certain amino acids. Mm-hmm. And then Tuesday, it gets other amino acids. Do I have to eat them together for it to no. make a difference? I mean, I like to think, I, I generally, I try to emphasize a variety throughout the day. But, like, if you're, if you are eating just one single food one day, which isn't really likely, but it's like an extreme case, let's just say, um, it's I'm, more about the week, you know. Okay. That's kind of where I. That's what I'm asking. Yeah, it's because more about like the week. it doesn't need to be a day to day thing necessarily. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm getting at, and that, that's yeah. why it, well, it wouldn't make any sense to me that it would have it would have you have to have a variety every day. Some days I eat like two foods, and that's it. And then, but that's not every day. And most days I eat different stuff, like from one day to the next. But mm-hmm. like your body's gonna figure it out. Yeah, your body has a pool. And what's funny, too... That's what I'm asking. Yeah, your body has a pool that it pulls from. and Okay. Yeah. What's funny, though, too, is that most people end up eating, you know, complementary proteins, quote-unquote. Anyway, like peanut butter and whole wheat bread, technically. That's, uh, yeah, there's (laughs) beans and rice. You can't get away from it. So it's like, you know, those foods that people tend to pair anyway that, you know... Let me me ask you this, then. So why is... Why is protein such a big deal? I don't know who necessarily was the one that made it a big deal. I mean, it does do a lot of different things in your body. So it's like a part of building your hormones, your enzymes. Um, yeah. It's a it, part it, of like hemoglobin. It plays which a role. Just yeah. So does fat. But like, so, so do carbs. But, you know, people stress about protein. It, that's that's what's the frustrating thing is that you know protein is one of your macronutrients so a nutrient you need in a large quantity so you've got protein carbs fats and actually technically water is considered a macronutrient because it's needed in a large quantity um but it's obviously not providing calories so no one really talks about it like that yeah but people put it's weird to think about <laughs> yeah. that water is a macronutrient whenever i talk about that in my class people my students are always like, oh, my God, what is well, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> just because there's no calories. Like, yeah. It's not a calorie thing. You just need water because you're you're made of water. Yeah. <laughs> um, but people put protein on a pedestal. And sometimes that happens with, like, fat, depending on the diet. Why, though? Why? I don't know why. I mean, when you ask some people, they, they say that you don't need carbs because you can make it from protein. Um, your fat, obviously, everything can be, tr- you know, made into fat in your body so like if you eat excess of carbs or protein it's basically stored as fat um or triglycerides anyway so that's probably one of the things see like the whole so people say you don't need carbs Mm -hmm. because your body can make carbs from fat and from and protein protein yeah well you so you can't make carbs from fat you can make ketones only yeah well there's um there's the there's two different aspects. There's a fatty acid and a glycerol portion of um, a fat, basically. So a triglyceride is um, a glycerol with uh, three fatty acids attached. And the fatty acid part of it um, will become the, the ketones, basically, in short. Okay. And the glycerol part can become carbohydrates. But you still need some of carb- some of the carbohydrates for that to occur. So like you still need carbs in a lot of these trans... I was going to say transactions. But well, it kind of is. Yeah. <laughs> you still need carbs in, in a lot of this too, but um, there's not the, the whole fatty, the whole fat itself cannot become carbs. You just call me a fatty? No. That's insensitive. <laughs> That's not nice. I get, yeah. uh, well, I get the logic when people say that um, your body can make them so you don't need them, but the fact that your body developed a process 
for creating carbs from protein Mm -hmm. doesn't tell me that you don't need carbs. It tells me that you need carbs so bad that your body had to create a process at some point throughout evolution to make them when you couldn't get them. Mm -hmm. It out-prioritizes carbs over protein. You can't turn carbs into protein, Mm -hmm. but you can turn protein into carbs. So that means to me that says carbs are more important. Yeah. Because your body needs them so bad that it needed to develop a process to create them with a less important macronutrient, hot take protein. Yeah. Like that's a hot take. That's, you know, yeah. and everyone hates carbs because <laughs> there's, there's so much food. Mm-hmm. And it's, uh, you know, the thing too is like people oversimplify the whole process and, and what carbohydrates, you know, are also packaged, like the foods that contain carbs have other things in them that are important. Some of them do. Some of them do. Like Oreos don't. Oreos don't. <laughs> but like in general, and that's what people think of when they think of carbs are like the they sweets think of and like things like candy that. Candy and sugar. Yeah, not like stuff. fruits, vegetables, and your yeah. you know actual whole carbohydrates. So what do you think people think of when um, they hear uh, fruit? Well, I guess they think of carbs. Yeah. Well, like, well, not, actually, not necessarily. To be honest, a lot of people, of? a lot of people don't. Some people think of fruit of having carbs, but I've actually worked with a lot of people who don't realize that fruit have carbohydrates. Which, again, not a bad thing. What do they think? What do they think is in it? Just like they're so low carb, they don't have carbs. And okay. I don't know where that comes from necessarily, but and again, I'm not saying fruit is bad. It's just <laughs> sure, sure. It's just a misconception I I hear often from clients. Is that so there's just nothing in it. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know depends like a watermelon is like 92 percent water yeah and, and not <laughs> and it's like a little bit of sugar yeah with a little bit of carbs or like avocado it's technically a fruit but it's yeah. really high in fat but I, avocados are basically butter it i don't is. understand people who eat <laughs> avocados i, I, like I avocado. understand avocado toast though because it's butter it's like <laughs> it's butter that grows on a tree seriously <laughs> that's avocados that's what avocados is wow what if I'm not talking? You can't say. Can't just <laughs> fill the gap. Keep, keep 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 it going while I drink my water. Um, fail. But Absolute fail. <laughs> I was just thinking. You know what? Because we started talking about carbs. Right, I'm but, done. I'm out of here. Well, okay. Bye. I'm just kidding. Uh, I heard about carbs, but I was just thinking that uh, there were some other and plant protein carbs that overlap. So avocados are butter. <laughs> we talk about avocado, but quote me on that. Take it to the bank. I'm making a shirt. No. Butter, avocados are butter. They're the good kind of fat. That's the they're, meme I always they're, say. They're butter. Yeah. I don't know. But anyway. But that's a good that's a good example of uh, fruit that is a weird thing. Yeah. And not <laughs> not sugar. Mm-hmm. Well, not high in sugar, not high in carbs. It's, yeah. It's like straight up fat. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, like you're like you're saying. So like with back to the protein, like um and 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 plant sources of it and plant mm-hmm. foods in general, when you when you eat a plant food that is like significant in protein. It's also generally significant in carbs, but it also so a, a, a significant percentage of those carbs are fiber. Yes. And packaged with that whole thing is vitamins. Yeah. Micronutrients. Micronutrients. So vitamins, vitamins and minerals. Minerals. Yep. And water. And water too. I mean, they're obviously really high in water. But things like like beans in particular they're like my i always recommend them to everybody but a lot of people are familiar say beans beans yeah beans they're like familiar to people so it's like an easy one to like yeah add into everyone the diet. knows yeah it's like chickpeas you know really high obviously they're gonna have carbs fiber but they're really high in potassium which mm-hmm. is good for your heart so like that's an easy one to throw on salads or throw on a stir fry as like a simple beans are. yeah throw them in. yeah i don't know about i don't know about beans i like beans yeah i ate i just had uh, like beans in a quesadilla earlier. Mm. I like beans. I eat them every day, almost. Not every day. I don't know about beans on a salad. I love beans on a salad. Chickpeas, they're in a salad bar a lot. They're a salady bean. Yeah, they're a salady bean. And black beans, your like kidney beans are more of like soup beans. Yeah, That's kind of what definitely. people associate those with. Definitely that. What's a, what's in baked beans? What kind of beans are they? Usually, I think they're 
I mean, they're they're like a little smaller than like a kidney bean. They're not pinto beans, are they? I don't think so. Right, I don't know. I, I don't know. know I don't normally oh. eat baked beans, but I can um, sneakily Google it and pretend I knew. I, I was going to say the main thing with the, that's actually when I talk about beans. Sometimes I'll have people say that means I can eat black beans or um, baked beans, and it's yeah, they're going to still have protein in them, but the the canned varieties usually have a ton of sodium and like. Oh well, yeah, of course, yeah, anything it's quote unquote process it says white beans white beans yeah oh is it like the cannellini uh i don't know it just says mm. white beans cannellini, I mean, cannellini are another are kind bean. of white bean right yeah just many types of beans yeah cannellini are another good one um yeah they're they they're pretty high in sodium i i will say yeah. Uh, and, you know, there's just a lot of everything in them, actually. Yeah, the usually. I'm looking at. Sometimes they add, like, lard to them, too, Ooh. so they're not exactly, mm. plant, you know, plant-based. But, Delicious. Um, baked beans yeah. is, baked beans is a dish traditionally <laughs> containing white beans, which are parboiled and then baked at a low temperature for a lengthy period of time in some sort of sauce. There you go. That's where the sodium is going to come from. And usually fat, depending on what they add in it. Yeah, no, that's because I'm looking at like a nutrition label. Yeah. And it's like 13 grams of fat. Um, this is like 13 milligrams of cholesterol, which I assume that's bad. Well, this is probably, mm, a, I don't know if this not, has That's not too high. I mean, well, I mean. There's the cat. <laughs> whatever. <laughs> you can't stay there. <laughs> Please move. <laughs> that's my, excuse me. All right, whatever. Uh <laughs> A thousand milligrams of uh, sodium, actually, also. That's like half of your intake. For yeah, that. it says 44%. <laughs> Is she really going to stay there? Come <laughs> on, cat. You're killing me right now. There we go. Good job. She feels left out. <laughs> yeah, she's going to sit just off camera. She could sit over here. I think it's paper, maybe. Well, whatever. Yeah. She's not going to She's not gonna do that. It's not going to happen. Um, and then fiber. 14 grams of fiber in this serving of, well, it's 55 carbs. Okay. And then 14 grams of those carbs or fiber. Mm. So What's the serving count. size, though? Was that a cup? Oh, I, I don't know what this is. That oh, one cup. That's one cup. Okay. 392 yeah. calories. One cup of baked beans. Um, 55 grams of carbs. 14 grams of fiber. 14 grams of protein. So if we're doing some quick maths, that's 41 grams of carbs that are not fiber. Yeah. And so that's significantly more than the, that's not more in calories than the protein and fat combined because the calories from fat, it's nine calories per gram. Mm -hmm. So nine times 13 plus 14 times four. And I'm not going <laughs> to do the math <laughs> right now say. because I'm not some kind of mathlete genius over here, but I know um, because I'm guessing that that's less than the calories from the carbs. Yeah. Somewhat. Yeah. So, yeah, just a, 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 a point mm. on the fly. Man, I like having a laptop for this. It's like uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm all know. She's trying to, she can come over here. It's like I'm all knowing. See, you just diverted her. She <laughs> was coming. I messed on. things up. Yeah. But Sorry. She's, she's curious. She wants to sniff everything. There's all these new so things here. Yeah, whatever. Not usually set she's up. She's going to lay. <laughs> oh, she's not in the shot, really. She's kind anyway. of in the corner. That's fine. Whatever. Cat, come over here. She, she, she's she's do like, that's no, Whatever. thank you. Yeah, I don't care. <laughs> Done caring about you, cat. Um, There's uh, yeah. a lot of vitamins in here. There's calcium, 50% of your um, daily for calcium. 4% vitamin C, which is nothing. Whatever. Yeah, Eat an that's orange. not my match. Iron, there's 27% of iron. Magnesium, 27%. Mm. B6, 10%. That's not bad. Yeah, iron's a big one. Just side note on iron, actually. Uh, your plant-based sources of iron are less uh, bioavailable. So just pair them with vitamin C. And it enhances and the that absorption. Well, okay. Yeah. So like Got beans you. and like lemon juice on your salad, or like an orange beans on the side. And lemon juice. <laughs> well, I, like you're doing a salad. What are you doing? <laughs> Sorry. Do you We're put doing... lemon juice on your salad? Well, yeah, I make a dressing with lemon juice. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. That I thought you were just <laughs> squirting lemons onto your salad. <laughs> no, I don't so know. We, is that normal or not? Is that some people yeah. do? I don't eat salads that much. Yeah. But and when like, I do, they're like half French dressing. <laughs> <laughs> they're like swimming in a pool of dressing. <laughs> it's good. Um. But yeah, or like good. some kind of vitamin C source in the side. Man, I kind of want baked beans now. Mm. They they taste they're good. Like they're kind of one of those I'm weird meat. A... You're not, of course you're not. I don't because don't... anything that's remotely not healthy in but some like, way. They're weird texture and like uh, they're I don't know. sweet that's not... and savory. See, that's why I probably don't. like You don't them. like sweet, which is fine because you're sweet enough. 
I don't know why you're so sweet. Boom. Yeah, I went there. Man. Yeah. You got some really great jokes today. Thanks. Um, that was kind of gross. Sorry. <laughs> Won't do that again. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Um, cool. I love being able to Google stuff. I feel like a, I feel like a superhuman. It's like <laughs> a superpower. If I was an X Man, I could. That would be my power to Google stuff. Oh. Heck yeah. If you could be an X Man and have a special power, what would it be? Um, I don't know. You don't know. Your answer is I don't know. <laughs> I would maybe. Could you be more boring, please? <laughs> Sorry, maybe Try. I would fly. Maybe you'd fly. <laughs> maybe I guess maybe fly or whatever. I don't know. Or be invisible. I think that would be nice. That's that's like a um God. There's like a personality test that says like, if you want this, you're that kind of person. And and two of the options were flying or being invisible. Like if you choose to be invisible, you're like an introvert. You're shy or some stupid crap like that. Oh. Whatever. <laughs> that's depressing. Yeah. <laughs> I like the idea if I could have any power of just having the ability to know any piece of information like that. Mm. Like if I just ask myself and then I know. <laughs> Although that be, I wouldn't want it to be like I'd be able to predict the future. I would just want to know any fact. Oh. Because if I could, if I knew how I was like, I was going to die or something, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't like that. Yeah. That'd, that'd be, be weird. Insane. But if I could just know, uh, you know, the exact weight of, like four medium bananas <laughs> just <laughs> off the cuff just instant bam. google in your mind yeah done mm. done ski that would be nice that would be nice i would think i would like that i don't know bit of a tangent there all right let's let's bring let's bring her back around um so you know lots of lots of plant-based protein tons and tons literally mm. everything try to avoid it <laughs> try i dare you try try to mm. not eat protein for a day you can't you can't and they're like, you know, not eating meat is what I mean. Like try yeah, to eat plants yeah. and not get enough protein. You pretty much can't. Yeah. Someone I mean, will challenge me. Even things like nuts and seeds too. Like yeah. that's a you, you know, know common one I that people just, like. like so. one, th- one thing about quarantine life for me right now is that um, my diet is like, I mean, I I live with a dietitian. So. <laughs> but hey, uh, I eat crap still mm. sometimes. It's always available. Uh, I can just I can I can walk up to Wawa anytime I want. But um, one thing that I've been going ham with nuts. Yeah. Like lots. They're you so you had cashews. <laughs> I stopped. I just stopped eating them because <laughs> I was going in on the cashews. Cashews are good. They're dangerous. Like you, we had the big container out. <laughs> and uh, I just kept, every time I was in the kitchen, I would eat because we have walnuts and peanuts out too. Yeah. And I would just eat them, and then I would eat the cashews. Like mm, these are good. <laughs> they're good. I like that they're. I like the texture of they're them. They're creamy and rich. Yes, they're they're like awesome to like make. If you ever want to make your own cashew butter, yeah. it's so easy to blend them. I'm sure. But that's actually the, like with a lot of plant based recipes for cheese sauces, like like not actual cheese. They use cashews. They'll like soak cashews and then puree the cashews because it gives like a creaminess to it. Yeah, I mean they're just just eating them. They're they're creamy and delicious and lovely. Yeah, cashews. So I just I, you move them like Felicia does this thing where um, <laughs> if she has a big container of something and then there's a small amount of that thing left, she'll find another container <laughs> that's more appropriate for how much is left and then switch it over. And that can take place like <laughs> five or six times if there's a lot of whatever it is. Say the cashews. The ones that we got down to like half the container, you transported them to a jar. (laughs) I did. And then you put them in the cabinet. I did. And then I was thinking, I wonder if she put them in the cabinet so I would (laughs) stop eating them. Well, I I put them in the cabinet because I wanted some, um, but... I I I knew where they were. I should order more. Whatever. Yeah, I I mean like, I don't know, whatever. I I, I stopped eating them because I was like, (laughs) I should should stop. I was eating a lot. (laughs) But uh, the walnuts are great. Yeah, walnuts. Walnuts don't, they don't taste great. I don't like eating them raw, but I love putting them in stuff. So like, I like it raw. You know, putting it in. Ooh, baby. Wow. Okay. You should probably just. You don't know that song. <laughs> um, Ooh, baby, I like you raw. You don't know that song, do you? No. That's fine. Okay. That's okay. That's probably better. That you, that's okay. Um, but they're uh, so good for you. Yeah. That I'll just eat them. And that's something that I never used to do. I'm 32. I'm old. <laughs> or young old and um depends on who you ask people get pissed off if you say you're old and you're not like so old that your (laughs) skin is falling off okay whatever (laughs) 
Wow. To your, well, actually, to the to the children, to the nieces and nephews, last time they saw me, they said, I was about to go into college. And I was like 29 when they said that about me. And I'm like, you know what? Yes. No, Let's go in, with that. I was in high school. Yeah. <laughs> totally. But um, I do eat things now just because I know they're good for me. Yeah. I'll do that. Um, that's a, like an active priority, like in my head. Like I don't, you know, you so many people just eat because they're hungry and they eat whatever they whatever tastes good. Mm-hmm. They don't think about that stuff. No. Uh, and I think you should. And walnuts are like one of those things that they're so insanely good for you that they're worth eating yeah. every day, all the time. High quality carbs or co- um, high high quality calories. Yeah, yeah. And it's not to say that like you have to force feed yourself stuff because like I don't I don't like eating raw walnuts. They just it's not exciting to me, and I don't want to do that but like so I'll it doesn't thrill you to eat raw <laughs> walnuts wow no. i can't imagine what your barometer for thrilling is then but i lose it every time i eat <laughs> raw walnuts i'm bouncing off the freaking but walls i will put them in like oatmeal or bake with them i don't stuff like that put nuts in oatmeal i mean they're they're a good one to throw in or are they yeah like nuts walnuts. in general walnuts oatmeal? are the they're more common when the people put in oatmeal like when you make hot oatmeal Walnuts. You put nuts in your oatmeal. Yeah, usually either slivered almonds. Cause slivered, I can. They'll soften up. Yeah, or you like, haven't had almonds in a while. No. You know what well, we should get? There's raw almonds in the, the cabinet. She, she likes They're it. Whole. She likes it raw. You guys. Oh my God. You can hear me whisper. That's funny. <laughs> it's just no. Well, the reason why I get the raw ones, just for anybody that cares to know, is that they're they're not going to have extra oils in them, like added oil stuff, and then also extra salt. You know, so. what we we used to get and eat a lot were those um, like those chocolate dusted almonds. Oh, the cocoa dusted ones. Yeah, yeah. We should get those again. I haven't gotten those in a while. They're good, but yeah. I used to eat them like a lot because they were just sweet enough mm-hmm. and just chocolatey enough to be to be like a treat. Yeah. But they're almonds. And they're like really low in sugar too. Like yeah. but you would think that they were higher. Generally, they're going to be lower. Yeah, but yeah. most of them, like the good varieties are like, like not a, quite a couple shot. gram. You like started shifting over. Yeah, I know. <laughs> trying to slouch and be bad posture, man. Yeah. You don't need this, right? No. Right. I mean, but that's like the walnuts itself or like nuts in general. They're They're like a good one to like... You know, if you're thinking about, like, eating more plant-based, you know, and transitioning away from meats or things like that, like, that's something that you can, you know, start with. is something you already enjoy, like nuts or seeds or stuff like that. And then just start adding it to, like, things you already do, like oatmeal or as a snack with some fruit or something like that. Just to make it seem like it's not this weird thing that you're supposed to be doing. I can't can't really wrap my head around the uh, nuts and oatmeal thing because it's Sorry. it's hot they're hard well they like when crunch? i yeah like i usually like will crush them up um and so they're like and some people will just get chopped walnuts in general like the ones you would bake with normally but just like chop them up and then throw them on top of the hot oatmeal and they're usually soften or like i, I don't really do it much right now but like overnight oats throwing oh, the yeah, walnuts yeah. in there and then they don't get mushy they just they soften and then I wipe, microwave it or eat it cold and, you know, it just works well. I don't know. I, Whenever I do oatmeal, I always just, like, I want everything in there to, to be, s- well, not really soft. I uh, I don't know if this is weird or not, but um, I I eat oats and oatmeal. Oats, like, like cold cereal. I said this to my mom and she was like, you do what? That's weird. And I'm, I don't think it's weird. It's not that weird. I mean, it's not common. So just like, to clarify, I put I put dry oats, like quick oats, in a bowl and just dump milk in there. Like, what do we use? What do we have? Oat milk right now? We have like oat milk right milk now. Or whatever. Yeah, it's weird. Oat, oat on oat. It's okay. <laughs> it's good. Um, whatever. It's they all. I don't know. They all kind of taste. The, I don't. I don't even care. I don't even draw a distinction between them. The only, the only time one of those nut milks. Um, it's like which one is weird in coffee? Almond milk. Yeah. So like almond. Most of the. the Unless it's like a creamer base where they usually add something to it, like the almond milk and the cashew milks, and usually like the rice milks tend to separate if you use it in coffee. Yeah, they get they get and weird. It gets really weird. I don't so. like them. Uh, it's not good. Or like peas, like green peas. There's a milk made from green peas, and it doesn't pea milk. Yeah, it doesn't taste like like pea peas. Milk. 
but it's got more protein in it, but that separates also. None of them taste like the thing that they're made from, except for me for um, coconut milk. Oh, I, yeah. That, that tastes like coconut. Mostly I don't talk about the taste with people. I talk either about the nutrition or like the creaminess and thickness. Like your almond milk is a lot thinner. Cashew milk tends to be a little thicker. So like, yeah, kind of cashew depends. milk is, is nice. And th- that's, you know, if you're the kind of person that really, really loves whole milk, it's definitely the closest. I'd say it actually overshoots yeah. it a little bit. Yeah, definitely. So if you want for more like something thicker, that's the cashew milk. That's the one I usually yeah. recommend and people. Yeah, and it, that tastes, it tastes good. I don't know. Just going mm-hmm. back to like how good cashews are, really. Yeah. You know? But like one thing that's a misconception with your plant milks is that not all of them are comparable in terms of like protein and nutrient content. So like... You know, with like nut based milks, most of them are like less than a gram of protein. Yeah, which there's isn't, not a lot, which isn't a huge deal at all. I mean, it's, it, but there's if not you're a lot looking, of much in them, though, really. No, I mean, usually you're going to get some calcium, some vitamin D, and usually some vitamin E. But like, like macros, like carbs and, and fat and stuff, is really not a lot. Not really. Compared like, to regular milk. If, and it, but it depends on like, like unsweetened, you know, cashew milk. It's like, 30 calories i think or 20 calories whatever it is something like that less than a gram of carb less than a gram of protein so it's really not it's like nothing really it's got some micros in it but but then if you look at something like soy milk even the unsweetened soy milk has like seven or eight grams of protein in it and it's usually you know a couple grams of carbohydrates and then something like you know if you get a sweetened variety that's where you're getting carbs yeah. it's coming from sugar but i mean it's straight up they're just adding a, a bunch of sugar yeah which you don't really i mean i don't know we don't just drink it no th- i mean you, you know, know it's people like people drink milk and that's yeah. kind of what you go for when you replace your milk I don't, I don't know do a lot of people drink milk just straight some up? some people do i mean and that's you know, again, if you're if you're a milk drinker and you're trying to transition, if you're a milk drinker, milk drinker. <laughs> I don't know some people are. That sounds like I've, an insult. I know I've had people. You stupid milk drinker. <laughs> that's an insult. There's a video <laughs> game, um, Fable, where that's one of the insults that they will call you oh. if they don't like you. Okay. They call you a milk drinker. <laughs> that's weird. <laughs> um, not a, I didn't intend it to be an insult. Yeah, whatever. We get it now. <laughs> we see your true colors, Raza Nutrition. <laughs> but dot com. So, <laughs> thanks for the merch link in bio. <laughs> Just kidding. There's I don't no have any merch. merchandise. No. <laughs> um, but some people do still drink like glasses of milk, like a cold glass of milk in the morning. And that's where like if you're looking for that kind of thing, like, you know, again, if you like something a little on the thicker side, God. cashew almond milk is See some people that? really like almond milk. Like I have clients who are they like, just drink it they just they like, like to drink it. Is it so. like the sweetened kind or no? Uh, the unsweetened, even. Really? Just, That's yeah. cool. Because it has a little bit of flavor more than, obviously, like, water. Yeah. So, it's still something. Yeah, it's not um, water. Although, they do have um, the unsweetened, they have unsweetened chocolate um, oh, yeah. almond milk. That does have we a little bit of a chocolatey something. flavor. Yeah, we have uh, still Is that we have one. the almond sweetened, yeah. or unsweetened chocolate almond mm-hmm. milk? Yeah. That they, one's pretty good. They make the... milk out of milk, you know, whatever. They oh, make yeah. that out of literally everything. They have macadamia Nut milk and yeah, banana whatever. milk. Whatever. Like too. the word milk is being abused by these companies. <laughs> Guys, it's not milk. Like, th- make up a. I mean, nut juice sounds weird. That's the one. But <laughs> that's some, some co- dessert is, is, is nut juice a product? Um, I, it I should be. If I it's not, it needs to be. I don't know if anyone actually called it that, but. Nut juice. I think they call it milk. They call it like an almond beverage. Like they don't use milk. Beverage. Some of them, yeah. Sure. Eh. So, whatever. But. Whatever. That's fine. I mean, uh, some people argue that you're like milking the nuts in a sense because you yeah. you like soak okay, them and so then like squeeze milking the, is yeah. a verb. It's yeah, not whatever. just a noun. I but get then again, that. it's like racing. It's that whole argument. Like, what is yeah. rice versus racing and words? Rice. You know, like all right, whatever. the meaning of a word is dependent upon how it's used. That's true. The dictionary definition of words changes depend on culture. Mm. It has happened. It's stupid sometimes. Like, I think the word literally, the definition of the word literally was changed to also meaning possibly figuratively because people would say, like, I'm literally dying right now because they're hot or something. Oh, and I've probably to said that they, before. Well, you, I don't know. Maybe we weren't going to get into that on camera, dramatic. but that's fine. Okay. You are dramatic <laughs> sometimes. Not really. She's not that dramatic. She's not. Uh, but, um, like, there could, I don't know, there's just not another good word for it. 
Yeah. For what it is. So not a, not a, just to round it back, because I guess we're still talking about plant-based protein, kind of. And this, this is fine. We're just going well, no, off on I mean, tangent, whatever. Like plant milks, matter. that's something that falls yeah. under that. Sure. It's just not a significant source of protein generally. No, per se. but it's a misconception because people think cow's milk, oh, if I turn this into a plant milk, nuts have protein. So obviously this should have protein. Get that. And they, you know, again, yeah. unless it's something like coming from peas or so not really. or flaxseed milk, they, they add protein into that or yeah, um, fortify it with protein. Yeah. Or uh, the soy milk again would be another one. Those are going to be your higher protein sources. But outside of that, Got you, fam. It's like mostly water. So. Mostly water. Water. Whatever. Water. It's not a bad thing, though. So it's it's just not going to be a significant source of protein. If that's yeah, no, it's, but it's not. That's, that's kind of just in, in terms yeah. of how, how how relevant it is to our topic. Yeah. It's not a, a necessarily a good source of uh, plant-based protein. No. Unless it's soy milk. Eight grams per cup. Unless it's soy milk. Oh yeah. Well, there you go. And that's kind of the most. That's kind of the most common one. But then you're a soy boy. Hmm. That's true. And then you're gonna. Then you're gonna grow breasts as a man if that's you drink soy milk. True. That's probably like a whole another podcast. Yeah, we <laughs> should. We should do a, like a, a one on a one on phytoestrogens. It's it is like a a pretty contentious topic. Yeah, soy in general, and you know, it's yeah, we'll do a soy. Cancer, we'll do you a know, soy that episode. whole thing. We'll save that. And the different types of you know soy. We, we too. can shelf that. So. That would be good. Um, I want to mention with, you mentioned like with talking about soy and, and tofu, like a lot of people think that, a lot of people when I talk about tofu are like, oh my God, I hate tofu. It's disgusting. But unfortunately their biggest, the way that they've had it is like on a salad bar where it's like a cube, yeah, a huge cube and not seasoned. All so, it is is cut up. Yeah. So, so tofu takes on the taste of whatever you cook it in. You but know, there's different types of tofu, so yeah. that's the other thing. Well, like firmness? Yeah, like there's the soft tofu, which is good for like a scramble, or like the super firm pressed, which... Yeah, you know, that's just that's good, good for... Ev- it holds up. Like you can... Yeah. I mean, look, your taste buds are accustomed to specific foods. Yeah. And if you change your eating habits, your taste buds will change. They will, yeah. And it's so weird. I experienced that. I um, used to not have a good diet. Shocking. And I made some sudden changes at one point where, like, I started fasting. And, you know, I'm not a doctor. I don't play one on the Internet. I don't recommend fasting. But um, I have fasted for, like, several days at a time. And then when I, you know, would start eating again, I would eat specific foods. And there was a time where, like, my body just started to associate broccoli with food so much that i would smell broccoli and think mm, that smells good and that's <laughs> the weirdest thing yeah to think that broccoli smells good and then i would like crave broccoli because i was eating that kind of stuff and you know most people don't realize how just viciously they slam their taste buds every day yeah so much stuff is so heavily salted and seasoned that stuff that has a moderate amount of flavor tastes bland well it's like the whole argument with like fruit some people will say like fruit isn't sweet enough but it's because like literally everything in the food supply has added sugar in it yeah so everything it's, you know, it's crazy it try sense. to avoid sh- like you're you can't yeah try to avoid sugar you can That's i new. well <gasps> i i was going on a camping trip a few years ago uh with with mike and um it was the one where we were we were on the the appalachian trail oh, and nice. um we went to um walmart whatever and just buying food to like take and we were buying uh like trail mix and nuts and and granola and stuff like that and i i rifled through like a giant shelf of of granola products and stuff and literally i could not find one that didn't have added sugar yeah not that's, one that's didn't like have the added hardest sugar. one and there was like 50 mm-hmm. and i ripped through everything looking at labels and i was talking to mike like can you just look to like just to make <laughs> it, it, we couldn't find anything? Yeah, it's ridiculous. And the one that was like the lowest sugar was like five grams per serving added. Yeah, that's that's actually pretty good. Like in terms of like, but the it granola. was <laughs> I couldn't I couldn't believe it. And I always heard that you know they add sugar to everything, and I was like, yeah, okay, mm-hmm. whatever. And like you know, you do see it. I mean, yeah, pick up any pick up any um like bag of of hamburger buns or something. Mm-hmm. There's sugar in there. Yeah. They add sugar. They add sugar to everything. Peanut butter, sauces, you know, salad dressings. That's, it's so everything. crazy. I just, I remember thinking like, oh, granola is like a health food. Yeah. Nothing. Not one. No. 
but that's and and it's true. Like everyone, everyone's used to foods tasting really sweet, and um, I don't know. Some fruits are crazy sweet. Yeah. That you know, if you don't think peaches are sweet, or like pineapple or something, you're insane. Like my mouth, <laughs> I just felt something in my mouth when I said pineapple. <laughs> that's strong stuff. But. I don't know. And then with, with, with fruit and, and how sweet it is, too, it can also depend on how ripe. Yeah. Yeah, that's definitely said then. We should probably talk about that in another podcast. Yeah, too. totally. Like it's, it's a sugar and time added sensitive sugar. food. That kind of thing. Bananas are. We, Felicia and I have very different preferences on when to eat bananas. Very different op- <laughs> opinions on this hot topic. I like spotty. Brown spotty. And Felicia likes <laughs> some green still. Yes. Basically. Yeah. Which to me is insane. And that's it like. It tastes like crap. It's to generally me. they're more starchy and less. Um, yeah. Less starch so, has been converted to sugar. So it's right, not that's, as sweet. That's, so that's interesting. And that's definitely something we should we should get into at a, a, a later date. Yeah. Another another time for the <laughs> for the <laughs> pod. Another. <laughs> trying to figure out how to switch this to time and not measures. Oh. Bam. Yeah. Did it. We're in. We're 51 minutes in. We, we, we got it. We got some time. We okay. can keep rolling. It's good. So um, well, would, one of the things that I think one of the things you wanted to talk about was like um, veggie burgers. Yeah. Like your process, like that kind of stuff, because, you know, depending on what your reasons are for wanting to maybe transition to, you know, plant based style of eating. It could be for health benefits. It could be, you know, animal reasons. It could be a lot of things or it could be a combination or you're just interested. Um, you know, there's the, the more common stuff like. You know, things like, again, chickpeas that I suggest adding in or, you know, if you want to experiment with tofu, tempeh, that kind of thing. But some people automatically think of things like veggie burgers. Terrible posture. Sorry. <laughs> veggie burgers or like your process, like your uh, your fake meat crumble, stuff like that. Um, I like, I love that stuff. Yeah. Those soy crumbles, the fake. Yeah. That stuff's good. And it serves, you know, there's there's a lot better products in the market now where a lot of them have less you know, added fat to them and less sodium and their, you know, nutritional profile looks a lot better, but not everything is the same. So it's, it, and you have to think about those things as like, they're still a processed product. Yeah. So it's true. They're totally fine to include, you know, like I like I using the ground crumbles and yeah, they're good. And stuff. I'm telling you guys, so. um, I was like typical mil- meathead Philly guy. Cheese steak every day. So the crumbles are good. Okay. <laughs> Get over it. They're good. <laughs> they are. But yeah. But like at veggie burgers, they widely vary. Like you've got the ones that actually have like the vegetables in them that you could see. Or you've got ones that are like soy protein isolate. So they're going to have a lot more protein, but they're more of a texture of like meat would be. So like people yeah. tend to like those better. Or like the Beyond Burgers or the Impossible Burgers use they're, a lot of pea protein. so good. So they, they also generally have a better texture. Not so They're not. And they're, they're really a lot of them are high in fat like they add like a lot of oils to them well i have fat to them anyway <laughs> but it's slap some you know. fake mayo on that bun and but some that's cheese the, that's the kind of thing though if, like you're looking for a burger like you Tasty want that burger yeah that's it you know, hits that target amazing. it really does do the trick for that like those those beyond burgers mm, then and you know most a lot of restaurants are on board now when i was mm. when i went to magfest when i was in dc like everywhere had them yeah they're like a mainstream thing now yeah. So there's no, you know, there's no excuse. Even when I was up uh, at my aunt's, like in Collegeville, mm-hmm. which is like, you know, in the sticks PA, like, you know, not like <laughs> rural-ish PA. Yeah. Like, a, I can't even remember where we went to, like a, like a Pizzeria Uno or something. Mm-hmm. They had them there. Yeah. They a had lot them everywhere. Of, a lot more places are doing, like, you know, you've got the, the one subset of restaurants that do a lot of like mushrooms or tofu or um, like eggplant in place of meat, which... They're obviously not the same in terms I don't of like, like, that. <laughs> like eggplant parm. No, get yeah. that crap out of it. Get it out of here. But like, then shouldn't even be a thing. Then you've got other restaurants that are kind of catering to people who are looking for that meaty kind of taste and maybe are exploring it from being a you know traditional meat eater, and that's a lot more palatable. Even to that them. sound that's such a weird term too, <laughs> meat eater. Well, yeah, but like that's a lot more palatable to like transition to something that tastes similar to me, has the same texture versus like eggplant. You yeah. know, not knock an eggplant. Or anything like that. I am. But just I'll <laughs> knock eggplant. I don't like it. Eggplant. Get it together. Yeah. But it's, you know, that's where you're, you're going to find a big difference. But, you know, with veggie burgers, though, like, 
you know, health benefit wise, I would, I usually try to recommend like, like I have frozen veggie burgers here. They're convenient. They're easy to throw in, you know, if I need to, but I also make my own from like chickpeas or lentils and, and everything you know. else you're eating. She, she eats like the perfect human diet. <laughs> I do not. Borderline <laughs> compared to like 98% of humans. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a bit extreme. Uh, well, but what you were saying, like with the veggie burgers, like you make your own sometimes you have, you have like the pre-made frozen ones mm-hmm. or whatever, but they're like not a thing you eat even every week. No. And it's, but that's the whole thing with like eating more plant-based and especially if you're like looking to transition is like, you don't have to just make everything from scratch. You don't have to always make your own veggie burgers or like always make your own Yeah, you anything. make a lot of your own stuff. Yeah, like You I, totally can though. You totally can and it's, it's not that hard. But start slow cuz that's what people get overwhelmed with as they, they like They just go nuts too fast yeah. too soon and they, they get overwhelmed. You know, you can rely on more of that process stuff if you need that to kind of get you into the transition. I remember so. that. Yeah. I remember I went vegan overnight. Like I found a couple of videos that led me down a rabbit hole and I tried the vegan thing mm-hmm. overnight and I bought bars. Yeah. Bars. Not those bars. Like cliff bars. Mm. Uh, I bought all kinds of bars and then I knew, okay, fruit. Duh. Uh, and then uh, uh, I leaned on potatoes. Mm. But what I wound up doing is kind of, kind of wasting some money. Because like I bought like boxes of bars, like and I was I was so determined. I was yeah. like, all right, this is it. I found some stuff that convinced me, like I can't not do this now. So that was the just the easiest thing for me to do. Yeah, and I wasn't miserable, but it wasn't fun. Yeah, for sure. Food should be fun, and well, it you should enjoy suck. what you're. <laughs> yeah, and you should enjoy what you're eating. So it's like. I don't know. With a transition like that, you know, I... And I had way too much fiber way too soon. It <laughs> was the, uncomfortable. That was the other thing. I mentioned, like, fiber being a benefit, but, like, if you're not normally eating a lot of vegetables or plant proteins, yeah, go slow. It makes you drink a lot of water, too. And if you don't go slow, you'll feel it. <laughs> yeah. You will know. <laughs> you'll know immediately. You will know <laughs> that night and then that next day. <laughs> yeah. And everyone else who lives with you <laughs> might know, too. Yeah. You want to go slow and add lots of water or God, hydration. you know what you don't want to do with fiber? <laughs> God. I see what I was saying. Chicory root extract? <laughs> yeah. Fart oil? It's a- <laughs> ah, the fiber one bars? Oh my God. I um, I had a few incidences with fiber one bars, <laughs> yeah. actually. Once at your dorm. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's pretty bad. Not good. And I only ate two. I ate two. And I just, I blew up the shared bathroom. Yeah. There's it was a symphony for like a half hour. <laughs> there was um, but like those yeah. Uh, don't I wouldn't I wouldn't do those. Uh, one. Not a lot of. Cap it off at one if you're gonna do fiber one bars. But seriously, yeah. anything with chicory root extract is not ideal. Yeah, it's not a bad thing for you. It's just sometimes a lot of companies will use that to boost the fiber in a product and. Yeah, is it cheap? Is that why? I don't know if it's cheap, but it's, it's I like mean, easy to manufacture yeah. or whatever. Cause those, um, they have those, uh, fiber. I almost called them fart gummies, fiber, <laughs> fiber gummies. Yeah. They all, they all have chicory root in them. S- chicory root or psyllium husk. I is always another see, one. Uh, I, haven't, I don't know. The well, last time I saw them at the store last, you know, like back when I used to go to stores, remember stores, <laughs> yeah, that's but, weird. um, that's a weird. yeah. So I don't know, but I, they would always have chicory root extract yeah. in them. And it's like, Ooh, mm. I've had some bad times. Yeah. Me and chicken root extract. I don't. I, that's a thing. That's not just me, right? That's a thing that. No, they just, that's just what happens. They've put them in um like things like gummies too, like gummy bears, and so people there's I've seen so many things online where people Crazy. like eat a bunch of them, not realizing that that's gonna happen. But, um, that's a mistake. But yeah, but yeah, I mean those and things like that. Like again, bars. Those are things you can bars you can make. You can have on hand, but like again, overwhelming yourself by like trying to make everything from scratch usually i find with people ends up being overwhelming so you know what's what's like all right i i don't cooking i don't know i uh, people's experience with cooking varies yeah but like given the current state of affairs Mm. a lot more people are cooking more um i am also one of those people at home i i did not cook much before this not a whole lot something you know we i have yeah but uh what i have found 
is that I enjoy the process of cooking a lot more right now. I like the, um, it's like an event. Yeah. You know, like I don't, I don't want to just grab some food and not be hungry one anymore. When I feel hungry, I'm like, all right, time to, time to go in the kitchen and make some magic. And then <laughs> I start cooking stuff and it's, uh, it's gratifying. You know, I don't know if yeah. it's fun, but I enjoy the process. Yeah. It's kind of like, um, I don't know. Some people like cleaning or whatever. Like you like cleaning. I like all the above. But <laughs> I'm just, no, but like when I, when I was, when I would cook, I don't know. Maybe some people hate cooking, but I kind of like it now. Yeah. Cooking at home. It does get to, I, I work with a lot of people who hate cooking or they don't like cooking for one or they're just, they're, they're overwhelmed by like what to do in the kitchen and this sense of like, if they mess it up, they're going to fail. But like, I, I always talk to people as like, it's a learning experience. You know, every time you go in the kitchen, think of it as an experiment. Yeah. And if it worked, great. If it didn't, you know what to tweak or not now do you know. next time. So yeah. it's, you know, not thinking of it as like it's success nice or failure, but experimenting. Well, it's like if you do botch something, it's kind of like a bad haircut. Like it'll grow back. Like it's not a big deal because there's yeah. always tomorrow and the next day and the next meal and you're going to exactly. eat food every day probably. Yeah. yeah. And like, you know, if you're, if you're new to all of this, like cooking or using different types of things that aren't meat, you know, it's, you know, start small and simple. Like one of my favorite things besides like we mentioned like oatmeal and stuff is like pasta, you know, people, pasta is a big thing like chickpea pasta lentil pasta different types of pasta yeah most people know how to cook pasta and most of that is like similar to cooking even regular pasta has protein in it though. it does it doesn't have a lot so like you know when people think of like a pasta dish they usually do like your you know meatballs or sausage so you can go a couple routes you can do like a you know those like fake meat stuff instead which generally you're gonna have a lot of protein or you can go like a chickpea pasta, which has protein, fiber, all that combined, and yeah. you've got it all in one, basically. The soy so. crumbles. I, I, uh, there was a hot minute where I was doing angel hair mm. a lot, and I would just throw them in. Yeah, it's great. It's really like good. really easy to do that kind of stuff. You but, make a little meat sauce out of it. Know. Soy crumble sauce. Yeah, whatever. But it's think good. of things you're already doing. You know, that's a good place to start. What you do already, and just see where you can swap out for something else. Do yeah. you do you think? Are there any other like um, easy sort of um, beginner friendly meat substitutes just off the cuff that you that you didn't already mention you think um i think that's all of them i mean it mentions chick- so we'll just run yeah. it down real quick um so we've got tofu tempeh um great for stir fries if you're that kind of person too sure. um we've got beans so any of your bean varieties legume uh your peas bees Pe- oh my god <laughs> can you talk please beans this and is a peas. podcast <laughs> sorry. beans and peas so like <laughs> chickpeas <laughs> you're apologizing um, <laughs> sorry yeah why why um, say it again lentils right, would be another one your nuts seeds so like nut butters chia seeds flax seeds and then also things like you know um you know we mentioned walnuts peanuts all that kind of stuff um i think that's oh quinoa is another one a lot of people know that more Quin- um, quinoa quinoa but quinoa pronounced quinoa yeah um that's, that's another uh, one. it's a high protein grain i yes. guess uh it's technically considered a seed but you uh, often see it lumped into the well, grain category excuse FYI. me fyi yeah. <laughs> but hey. that's considered like your pulses and all that too yeah um i think that's all of them I'm trying to think of like I'm like running through the what's in our cabinet well <laughs> like and then mentally. you know the stuff that has a fair amount of protein that you don't people don't think about yeah yeah like and all then, the grains and yeah like even like your your rices and all your grains they're, they're generally going to have some there. protein in there too um you know wheat we don't do wheat but like a lot of people wheat it's, still has some protein there. like durham wheat pasta yeah. generally a lot higher protein in it seitan is another one too um satan like from the <laughs> bible <laughs> no seitan s-e-a s-e-i-t-a-n um that's another i don't know what my bad jokes i'm not not sorry though she's leaving (laughs) she doesn't want to be a part of this anymore um but all those would be you know and again there's so many different types in all those like different types of beans and different types of peas black white peas and green peas and all that that you know edamame like frozen edamame love that first stir fry do you consider Um, starch like a high protein ish food it depends on the type of food it is like if you're comparing starches you're thinking like beans but also potatoes and your beans are obviously going to be a lot higher like eight grams protein versus like do potatoes have 
a fair amount of protein in them. Like one per like medium sized potato. Uh, <laughs> so it's not really. It's not. Yeah. Like it's it. That's where it can but add rice? up. What about rice? Rice, I think, is one or two grams depending on the variety. Okay. Like, yeah. And like oats have. Yeah. Some oats, I think it's six grams of protein. So that's um, that's significant. I well, that's know. like oh, you know, with oats, if you're doing like an oatmeal in the morning, you throw in some chia seeds, you throw in some walnuts, you know, you use yeah, soy milk. You, you that's like an easy way to throw in a bunch of protein. So kind of like to just come full circle, the misconception is that plant foods don't have enough protein. Mm-hmm. The incomplete thing, which the incomplete protein thing, which is more or less a myth. Yes. Um. And that you don't need as much as you think you do. Yeah. And like. So just all that stuff considered. Yeah. And, you know, there's obviously varying levels of protein needs. You know, if you're pregnant or breastfeeding, an athlete, athlete, those are obviously going to higher your protein needs, but it's still really easy to get enough protein on a plant based diet or eating plant proteins in general. They do, they do make. Protein powders that are plant based. Well, yeah, I was just gonna say I have a plant based protein just, powder in the fridge too. You know, like, there's still all of that stuff, and it's usually a blend of like nuts and seeds. Throwing and it out there, whatever. So there's there's lot there's way more options now, but there's still heck yeah, you know, your actual foods like your beans and your peas that still have a great amount of protein in them too. My beans, your beans, my peas, your peas, their peas, her peas, her peas. <laughs> Do you remember why not this? him peas? <laughs> I don't have herpes. <laughs> ah, okay. Ah, okay. Uh, we've had, <laughs> we're, we're an hour and six in, uh, closing on an hour and seven. I think, I think we should wrap it up. Yeah. I think with the, yeah, with that. That was stellar. <laughs> That's great. Great stuff, guys. Really why. proud of you. This is and what me. happens. I'm proud of me too. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, thanks for listening. Thanks for listening. Maybe if you it's, made it this far. It's been fun. <laughs> um, we're we're going to do this more, you know, got a lot of free time right now. Oh, yeah. And we, we should do this again. Yeah. Prozenutrition.com, uh, youtube.com slash Prozenutrition. <laughs> um, Instagram. Prozenutrition. <laughs> Twitter. <laughs> Prozenutrition. Actually, I think it's Felicia Peraza. Whatever. Uh, it's all linked uh, together. Yeah, we'll link them in the description. Yeah. This will be on YouTube and hopefully something else. Yeah iTunes maybe uh, I think we have well, SoundCloud and then uh, SoundCloud it's on like most podcasting cool. apps so. definitely YouTube though yeah. alright thanks for listening slash watching we will see you next time bye <laughs>